Hi everybody, been a while, you could argue it's been a very uh, long while since we did one of these fun with physics things. Uh, this one is uh, sort of a follow-up. Quite a while ago I made a video explaining I did something incorrectly regarding uh, sort of uh, arrow, downforce, balance, and well, I didn't do a great job explaining it, so let's try to do a better job uh, today. Um, falling back to falling bricks so just to set you uh, give you an example of the thinking behind this whole thing so on your screen is a perfect drawing of a brick you let it fall from a certain height it falls straight down and it hits the ground floor somebody's head whatever happens to be below it but it will be going straight down that seems fairly obvious it won't do this it won't fall and, and go all crooked and, and angled unless there is an external force if you k twist it as you let it go or there's a strong wind blowing or whatever in a normal environment this won't happen yes no seems pretty clear and the reason why that happens is because the center of gravity of the brick which we know is right in the middle that's easy is in line with the center of drag so there is like a aerodynamic drag force applied at the bottom of the brick here and it's equally distributed over this whole length so in the center is where it effectively applies they are in line and when something forces are in line with each other there is no moment there is nothing that can cause any rotation so it will fall straight down as you can imagine and as i've shown yeah it's a brick you know it doesn't produce magic downforce or whatever don't want to diss on the bricks uh, they're very useful for many things so all right now let's let's make the translation uh, or the, the rotation rather push, to uh, being in a wind tunnel with this brick so imagine like this nice propeller here's the wind tunnel and we put the same brick on its side and we add some friction free magic rollers so it's resting on those you can probably imagine something like that um, if we then turn on the fan, well, this will happen. The brick will sort of be blown backward and it will fall off the roller. So this experiment is currently failing. And how can we fix that? Well, how about gluing the rollers to the brick? That might fix it. So let's do that. And then we turn on the fan. And our brick, uh, including rollers, because they were perfect and frictionless, starts to slide backwards and into the wall at the wind tunnel leaving us with a very expensive repair bill so that's pretty poor however final fix let's add some wedges or uh, if you will glue the whole thing to the ground and now it won't roll backwards anymore so we don't get any repair bills from uh, from the wind tunnel so that's all pretty good and now we can do our measurements bit weird but mm, what happens now we we cannot just do that we cannot just glue the car sorry brick to the floor of the wind tunnel without a penalty because that drag force that applies here is countered only at the floor at the ground level here uh, from gluing or wedging using a wedge or a block or whatever securing the car sorry brick uh, to the floor so we have a force here and a force there and if you've paid semi attention in physics school that means we get a moment so let's just add some fictive uh, values here let's say we have 500 newtons of drag applied one meter of the ground and we have a two meter brick wheelbase and that means this 500 newtons is countered here at the floor 500 newtons giving us a backflip moment you can kind of imagine that this force applying here and this force applying there you get a sort of a moment that way now if you do the math it's not that complicated you can get weight transfer from this because this moment here it has to be reacted somewhere and it can only happen uh, from weight transfer which comes down to 250 newtons you basically divide the weight transfer by the wheelbase sorry the moment by the wheelbase and you get a weight transfer we do this the, the the math and we add the numbers we, this is what we get so 
that brick that we just dropped straight down and we are sure has no downforce or lift now seems to produce front lift and rear downforce of course it, it's not it doesn't it ha doesn't have that but it's purely the result of fixing the whole thing to the floor and this drag moment wants to tip it backwards lifting up the front and pushing down on the rear so it's pretty clear uh, that the brick isn't responsible for it doesn't have aerodynamic properties like that so it's only caused that's very important by this drag force applying off the ground creating a moment so yeah this brick is not in need of a front wing to balance it out it's stupid it's a brick it doesn't have any downforce that needs compensating or a lift that needs compensating So, uh, before we do a real-life example, um, so far I've assumed the center of drag height to be at the same height as the center of gravity. So the point where the force of the drag, the wind tunnel, wind force applies to be at the same height as the center of gravity of the vehicle. And that's almost guaranteed to be never quite true, but I don't think it's, in our example, going to be that far off that it completely throws away our accuracy, so we'll still have some useful numbers. But if you do know your center of gravity height and your center of like drag, aerodynamic drag height, you can basically do the same thing. You get another moment, which is the, uh, the drag force multiplied by difference in center of gravity height from the center of drag height. And that will cause some extra weight transfer. But for this example, uh, it's not necessarily important to, to, to look at it because this, the last couple of percent most cases depending on your car but probably not a huge effect not as much as what i'm trying to explain here so i'm going to assume center of drag is at the same height as the center of gravity here is a uh, quite beautifully drawn uh, gt3 car with an assumed center of gravity and center of drag height of 0.4 meters which is probably reasonable for a car like that we don't know for sure but let's, let's say it's ballpark ish got a wheelbase of two and a half meters all sort of like a bit like a Porsche GT3 racing car might have had perhaps an older generation and let's say we are uh, experiencing 1500 newtons of drag and we've put the wedge on the rear tire so that it doesn't cause a dent in the wind tunnel and in the car because previously we only dented the back of the wind tunnel and now we also would dent our car so that's a double bill we'd like to avoid that so the wedge is in place doing the math just like we did before we get 240 newtons of weight transfer now let's say we get this result from the wind tunnel it's a gt3 car so it's got a lift to drag ratio of about 1.5 so with 1500 newtons of drag we get a total of 20 2,250 uh, complex newtons of downforce and let's say these are the numbers we get from the wind tunnel scales so 750 on the front and 1500 on the rear that would uh, seem a lot like we get 67 percent rear downforce in this case but we calculate it we get weight transfer from this drag force applying above the ground reacted at the ground here creating a backflip moment so if you calculate with that on the front we have to uh, add like we we have a total of 750 so this is what we measured but this includes 240 upward lift from the weight transfer the backflip drag thing and at the back we have an inc this also includes 240 downforce from the weight transfer thing so if you calculate it again compensating for this uh, drag induced backflip weight transfer moment we actually get 990 on the front from the down arrow and 1260 at the rear so our actual in my opinion actual arrow distribution is 56 percent rear quite a big difference from 67 don't you think so that's a huge difference on a GT3 car and um, well let's do a more silly example let's uh, have a raised sort of pickup truck yay <laughs> mm. 
very beautiful right so but the whole point of this is that okay again it's sort of a brick we don't have a thing that produces any downforce it's just a silly thing no downforce at all but by putting it in a wind tunnel with a very high center of gravity and center of drag and a very sl short wheelbase we get a front lift of 2000 and a rear downforce of 2000 simply from the same math that we did earlier so if this was in the wind tunnel and you were looking to improve the handling you might think well we get a lot of front lift and rear downforce we better add some a wing so we add a big wing to the front beautifully drawn once again i uh, always try to uh, impress artistic skills a uh, big wing adding lots of downforce to the front and let's say that gives us front 1000 downforce and a rear 1000 newton downforce so seemingly this is nicely balanced but it's completely incorrect because we still use this wedge here to uh, keep the car from uh, rolling backwards and, and damaging people and, and buildings so if we then remove that that wedge and the car will start to move backwards what has happened we've lost that moment it's all gone suddenly and that means suddenly at the front we have 3000 newtons of downforce and at the back we have 1000 newtons of lift so this car that we seemingly made neutral by treating the wind tunnel incorrectly and by in reading the results incorrectly will now make us crash because we let go of the throttle this reaction force is gone and we've got a lot of front downforce rear lift as if we apply any steering we'll be off the road into a hedge somewhere so this is just a, a, an extreme ex example to show that a bit abs absurd but to show how uh, big that error can get in certain vehicles so 11 percent on the gt3 car is big but here this is a guaranteed crash waiting to happen so um, conclusion is if if you hold a car on the brakes or with a wedge or a block in the wind tunnel you get that center of drag that applies always above the ground but the force is always going to be countered at the ground level from the brakes uh, making the tire sort of lock up and you get the tire versus ground force or you add a bit of a wedge which is probably even at a slight angle but let's ignore that put the car on the brakes that always creates a moment and that creates weight transfer and that appears to cause front front lift and rear downforce but well i hope to have shown you that it doesn't uh, it's incorrect and it can be quite significant so uh, why is this not an aerodynamic force well a force equal to the wind sort of trying to stop you from going quickly uh, it's basically what it does is simulates you drive at a constant speed so you have a tire to ground force like a driving force equal to the drag the aerodynamic drag force on the car so you're doing 180 kilometers an hour constant speed for example but that force that from the engine to the drive then to the tire is not an aero force it's super weird if you treat it as such because it's a force on the ground from the tire going back through the drivetrain to the engine so whatever weight transfer you get from tire forces is not aero that's something that the mistake that i kind of made because i always um, assumed this scenario where the drag is, is is reacted at the ground level from the rear tire and that's not really true so on the gt3 porsche car we saw that's uh using the incorrect method as i call it now uh resulted in a 67 percent rear bias and if if you get that on your porsche cup it's probably fairly well fairly well sorted but you might you might think well i need to be looking for a bit more front downforce or even reduce some rear downforce to get that arrow bias to be a bit closer to the weight distribution of the car which is not necessarily a good target but sort of a probably a reasonable target to begin with so if you use the incorrect method you might reduce rear downforce or you want to add front downforce if you compensate for this drag moment weight transfer thing you would actually get 56 percent rear arrow which is probably fine but if anything you would like to add some more rear downforce so the goals from adjusting the car in the wind tunnel would be the opposite depending if you correct for the drag moment or not and a lot of 
uh, if you if you are at a wind tunnel, it's it's probably not absolute anyway because there's always errors. So you're more than likely just testing changes and applying a bigger wing and and sort of looking at the difference between various wing settings, and that might make sense and you might be able to interpret that. But you do have to be very careful about the uh, downforce balance that you see and if it's actually the arrow bias or not and um, be very careful with that I would say um, so yeah that's uh, kind of explained hopefully to a slightly better degree uh, I did it the bad way here so what I did uh, I fixed the car in a wind tunnel uh, by the brakes applied an aerodynamic drag and I did my calculations for for the arrow bias and in my case, my Porsche GT3 car, if I would make it for a simulator, would then have quite a bit of front, actual front arrow bias, even though I, my calculation said it didn't, uh, because I was locking the car on a wedge uh, on the brakes in the wind tunnel. And then when I let go of the throttle and that, that drivetrain, that tire force is gone, I would have a lot of downforce on the front and my car would be very twitchy of throttle, basically. It is... Uh, worse, the higher your car is, the higher the center of gravity, center of drag is, the shorter your wheelbase is. So something like a supercar or uh, like a stadium super truck, those are more affected. And also the less downforce you have in a way, because it's not downforce, but you can get, you saw it on the sexy truck, this, this doesn't have any downforce at all, but you would l be led to believe that you get a lot of front lift and rear downforce, but it's not downforce. It's only that reaction moment. So you can be put on the wrong foot by uh, by this, basically. Anyway, that's all fixed in my uh, spreadsheet calculations when making sim cars, but it's also apparent in if you do some wind tunnel tests or you get wind tunnel data as a sim engineer. Sometimes you get people f uh, put full scale cars in the in the Myra wind tunnel. And I believe they do use this method of just locking the car in place. And I'm not sure if they compensate for it, but being aware of the fact that you get weight transfer from just putting the car on a wedge or on the brakes in the wind tunnel is, is quite important. So, yeah, I hope that explained it a little bit better. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, I might reply. <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.